Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Uh, Shatish, Mr. Uh, Girish, Mr. Uh, Dr. Mitrashen, Dr. Tomar, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Garg, uh, and Mr. Kerry Adler. I should just mention, uh, I'm very delighted to be here this morning with uh, a very, very distinguished and great Canadian business leader. We've heard, from him, uh, we've heard him speak just a few moments ago and uh, what he's brought to this country through Sky Power Global and his team, very talented individuals, many of whom are here today, um, is the best of Canada-India business relations. So thank you very much for that wonderful uh, address, Kerry. Um, I'm very delighted to be here this morning to offer up a few uh, welcome remarks uh, as you inaugurate uh, this uh, Congress. Uh, and you know, when Dr. Garg uh, asked me uh, if I would consider speaking a couple of months ago to this event, the immediate reaction was yes, uh, without any hesitation. And there are a few reasons for that. You know, the, uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in one way, I'm sensing that a very, very significant amount of my time as High Commissioner as we promote trade and investment relations between Canada and India is actually ha has been over the last few months, in particular in the realm of renewable energy. Um, it's a sector that all no not only is emerging and not only that is the future of India, Canada, trade relations, among other areas, but is very much the now as well. And there's a lot happening, and you've heard a little bit about that already. Uh, Mr. Adler's address was a good example, and there's much more uh, that you're going to explore over the next couple of days uh, as well. So very, very delighted to be here uh, at this uh, conference, and uh, very timely as well, as a number of Canadian companies are expanding their reach uh, into India in this sector, and we see further great potential and ongoing collaboration, building on the success of Sky Power, which is still at its infancy with huge potential going forward as well uh, in the renewable energy uh, sector. Incidentally, it was uh, also uh, great as I arrived this morning just meeting with individuals uh, and uh, just to see the diversity of knowledge in the room today and, and that uh, is also on display over the next couple of days through the different uh, panels that you've got. Um, I certainly sense that this is going to be a very, very fruitful uh, conference. And as Dr. Garg mentioned to me this morning, and, and I, I echo this very much, it's also really great to see uh, a diversity of uh, depth of experience. There's a lot of young leaders, young academics, young in, the, uh, younger folks that are engaged here today with those that have a lot of experience. And as this whole sector of renewable energy continues to be front and center, as part of the future of India and Canada relations. I think there's a, a lot of uh, promise here, and I have no doubt that this conference will be a, a tremendous success. Now, there's no doubt that, this, uh, that renewables are an ever-important source of energy going forward, and I think that uh, is very clear and will become even more abundantly clear as different panels continue over the next couple of days. According to the International Energy Agency, global energy demand is expected to increase by 40% between 2009 and 2030, the worldwide market for clean energy technology will, keep, will more than keep pace with this increasing demand. Uh, various concerns, whether it's clean air, climate change, the need for a safe, reliable, and secure energy supply, the expanding energy needs of the developing world, continue to stimulate that market, and, uh, and we see this continuing well into the future. So given this scenario, I remain very confident that Canadian companies can partner with India to not only address the energy needs of our two countries, but provide clean energy solutions for the entire world. And a lot of what you're seeing here today, currently in India, Sky Power is a great example, um, is an element of what we're seeing around the world and how India, Canada can play a leadership role not only within this country, but also around the world as well. Now, a few months ago in April of uh, 2015, Prime Minister Modi visited Canada and during that visit, he noted significant opportunities available to expand bilateral trade and investment in the energy and resource sectors, as well as related technologies and sectors. He commented, Canada has what India needs. And I'm very, very pleased to see that prophecy or that comment being realized through tangible examples, tangible results, uh, such as those of Sky Power and others as well. There's real potential for cooperation in areas such as energy efficiency, innovation, exchange of regulatory best practices, and renewable energy itself. And as you know, Canada has abundant resources and as a result has developed significant expertise in the renewable energy sector. 
Canada boasts one of the cleanest electricity systems in the world, with three quarters of our electricity supply emitting no greenhouse gases, including close to 60% from hydro, the balance coming from nuclear, solar and wind energy. India can continue to benefit from Canadian expertise in all of these key areas, hydro, solar, wind and other advanced technologies like fuel cells, tidal and biomass energy as well, and hopefully you'll explore some of these other, other topics over the next couple of days to your various exchanges. Canada is endowed with vast and varied natural resources, including massive supplies of water, solar, wind and biomass, the raw materials that are necessary to produce green energy. And as we prepare for the resulting significant increases in the use of hydro, solar and wind energy, Canada has developed versatile and mature technology and services in these sectors based on strong investment in its science and technology, research and development, the entire innovation chain through a multitude of partners, small, medium enterprises, large scale organizations, as well as the academic and research uh, sectors as well. With respect to solar energy, solar technology is the world's fastest growing energy sector with global demand growing by more than 44% per year over the last uh, decade uh, plus. Canada is ready to take advantage of this opportunity and in many cases already has and we've heard of that already briefly and you'll hear more of that in the next couple of days. We have well established links to global supply chains and distribution channels and generous provincial and federal incentives for manufacturing and deployment. Uh, we've just heard of Sky Power's success here which in addition to business success and advancing the solar relationship between Canada and India will also result in Canadian know-how and technology coming into this country. Uh, Sky Power's story is one of great success and we certainly look forward to seeing that ongoing well into the future. Earlier in this year in April during Prime Minister Modi's visit to Canada, Ontario-based Amp Solar also signed a memorandum of understanding with the Sun Group here in India to jointly develop own and operate over 500 megawatts of solar assets in India over the next three years. So you can see that uh, the uh, relationship between Canadian business and India uh, flourishes, is broad and will continue to grow. Now the investments by these companies and others into new infrastructure in India represent important relationships between Canada and this particular field of solar energy, but is also a reflection of broader cooperation in other areas as well. With respect to hydropower, Canada generates more than 12% of the world's hydroelectricity, making it the second largest global producer after China. With over 100 years of experience transforming water resources into productive power, Canadian companies are global leaders in hydropower technology expertise and service provision. Canadian firms also offer broad and established expertise in all aspects of hydropower technologies and services and are active here in India and in the region. Canada-India cooperation in the hydro sector not only is long established, but I'm also pleased to say that we are working with the Ministry of Power to hold workshops whereby Canada and India will cooperate to share information on advances of technology, project design, and consultations, community consultations. So it goes beyond the projects itself, but the entire ecosystem to develop these, uh, these, these projects. Wind energy, we touched on that briefly. Wind is the fastest growing renewable energy source in Canada with average annual growth reaching 40%. It's already generating enough electricity to power close to 900,000 homes and businesses. And as a result, Canada is one of the world's few net exporters of energy and there is certainly potential for Canada-India cooperation in this sector as well. And I know that's part of the uh, discussions over the next couple of days. And I mentioned a couple of other renewables. While Canada-India cooperation on hydrogen and fuel cells, bioenergy, tidal energy and geothermal hasn't yet been explored to its full potential or in a lot of depth. These are certainly areas where Canada has developed significant expertise and very, very timely in the context of a global discussion such as this over the next few days. As India advances into these technologies itself, we will be more than happy to pursue cooperative exchanges in these areas as well. In fact, Canada is home to roughly 80% of global hydrogen and fuel cell facilities making it a model for international deployment capability. Over a billion dollars was invested in the Canadian hydrogen and fuel cell sector between uh, over the last six, seven years or so. 
uh, important developments are taking place in cities such as Vancouver where international companies have invested in research facilities for advancing hydrogen fuel cell technology for the auto sector is one example of many. Now, um, with experienced firms spanning the product and value chain, Canada continues to exhibit global industry breakthroughs in performance, reliability, durability, and cost competitiveness in all of these areas. And we certainly look forward to being a very significant and ongoing partner uh, with India well into the future. With respect to bioenergy, Canada has more biomass resource per capita than any other nation. Forests cover 35% of our land mass in Canada, the largest forested area on earth. The Canadian bioenergy industry is unique and able to deliver customized solutions to customers around the world, and there's significant potential for investment in the bioenergy realm as well. A quick word on tidal energy. Bordered by three oceans, Canada is exceptionally rich in tidal current and wave energy resources and has one of only three large-scale tidal stations in existence and the only one in North America. And finally, geothermal, worldwide geothermal energy investment was one of the highest growth renewable energy sectors with investment reaching 2.2 billion uh, a few years ago, up, from 100, up, up about 149% year over year, and that uh, trend continues to grow at a fairly rapid pace. So the government has also created specific institutional mechanisms to strengthen Canada's renewable energy capability. And I've touched on a few specific sectors where we have a significant role to play and have played. So given these capabilities in the renewable sector and India's strong technology focus, we see tremendous potential for two-way learning across a range of clean energy research and deployment, which are supported by an ecosystem of tangible business results. And I think this is really, really important, and we certainly look forward to you exploring some of these ideas over the next couple of days. I remain confident that companies, research organizations, and universities from both our countries, both our countries, will benefit from working together on a mutual areas of interest to provide best technologies for clean energy growth. And you know, one thing that I, I strongly believe is Canada and India can do more as partners than we can individually as nations going it alone. And these are some very good examples where that cooperation will no doubt lead to greater success. So I, I, uh, I look forward to hearing how this conference goes over the next couple of days. Um, I'm no doubt that this conference and others will yield many opportunities, many interactions, leading to important commercial relationships. Um, take advantage of Sky Power's team here, many of whom are in the audience, large exhibit there. I've also been accompanied by our uh, Minister Commercial, responsible for all trade and investment between Canada and India for all of India, Mr. Parrott, as well as the Chief Representative of the province of Ontario, who focuses on trade and investment between Ontario and uh, India. We have a lot of resources at the High Commission. We look forward to seeing this conference be a huge success and the first of many. Canada is a proud partner through Sky Power, as well as the opportunity to be here, offer up a few insights. You can see that we have a lot to offer uh, nation to nation, and we look forward to really, really continuing to see some tangible results of that. Good luck, enjoy the conference, and thank you again for the opportunity to speak this morning.